In this lesson, we will be covering what an op mode is, as well as different types of op modes. You should have seen our previous tutorial about setting up your phone with a control hub. If you have not seen it, the link to the video is in the description and in the upper right hand corner of this video. In this tutorial, we will cover the theory behind op modes, the different types, the unique program flow, and then look at some sample op modes. It is also worth noting that since this is the first programming tutorial you are watching in this video series, you are on a path to complete the tutorial series using OnBot Java. This is good if you already have an understanding of both general programming concepts as well as Java specific ideas. If you do not have this knowledge, we instead recommend our block tutorial series. If that all sounds good to you, let's begin the tutorial. Op mode stands for operational mode. It is the code that runs when you start your program from your driver station phone. There are two distinct types of op modes and two different styles of programming them. Let's start with the types of op modes. The two types of op modes are autonomous and teleop, sometimes called teleoperated. They mimic the two stages present in an FDC game. The autonomous period lasts for the first 30 seconds of the game. During this time, robots must maneuver without any driver assistance, based on pre-programmed instructions. The next 1 minute and 30 seconds are teleop. In this time, one or two drivers can use controllers to control the motion and behavior of their robot. Something to be noted is that you are allowed to have the robot perform some or even all functionality autonomously in this portion. However, it is rarely done due to the high chance of error with autonomous operations, especially with opposing alliance robots in its area. So, essentially, autonomous op modes run without the use of a controller, and teleop op modes primarily use a controller. You now know about the two types of op modes. However, each type can also be programmed in two unique styles. The two styles are called linear and iterative. Linear more closely resembles a standard program flow. There's one function where you write all your code. The code creates custom loops and if statements to manage the program flow, based on whether the program is stopped, initialized, or started. The iterative style instead has five built-in functions. init, which stands for initialize, init loop, start, loop, and stop. Each function will run the code inside of it with, while a certain condition is true. init runs once when init is clicked on the driver station. init underscore loop continues to run after init has been pressed, but start has not been. Start runs once once the start button is pressed. Loop continues to run after the start button has been pressed and until the stop button has been pressed. Finally, stop runs once after the stop button has been pressed. You put the code you want to execute within these functions and they will automatically be called in the corresponding times during the program. Essentially, the linear style controls the program flow through the use of custom while and if statements, whereas iterative controls program flow through the use of five automatically called functions. The choice of which style to use is fully personal and dependent on your style of programming. However, we will be primarily using the iterative style for this tutorial series. Let's see some actual code for these op modes. Start by heading to where we left off in the last tutorial. To do this, you'll need to power up your control hub and wait till the LED indicator turns green. This will take about 30 seconds. Once it's done, on your driver station phone, open the menu and click Program and Manage. Next, ensure that you're still connected to the hub's Wi-Fi network. Then from an external device such as a laptop, navigate to the local web address shown on your driver station phone. Then click Onvod Java. Then click the plus icon in the right hand side to create a new file. From here, name the file anything you want, following the naming conventions of a Java file. Clicking Select a Sample Op Mode, you can see various different examples of code, ranging from level to beginner to advanced. We will take a look at two samples in specific, Blank Iterative Op Mode and Blank Linear Op Mode. Simply select the sample from the drop-down list, and once it's selected, click OK. Make sure that you selected the Op Mode as either Autonomous or Teleop, so that you'll see it show up on your driver's station phone under the corresponding category. Once both files have been made, click the wrench icon in the bottom left hand corner to deploy your code to the control hub. Let's take a look at the files we've made. We will start by looking at blank iterative up mode. Here we can see the five functions previously described that will run over the course of a program being initialized and stopping. This code in particular, as the name implies, is mostly blank. It does, however, print status initialized once to the driver station phone when the program has been initialized. The code is placed in the init function. You can display data on the driver station phone through telemetry.addData, a built-in command. The command takes a name and then a value. It then prints name, colon, 
value in that order to the driver station phone. Taking a look at linear shows us how we achieve running different code for different states of the program. We put our initialized script before the wait for our start function. This works because the main op mode function only runs once the program has been initialized. And so that code will run one time. And then the code will wait until start is pressed. As the function name suggests, after the wait for start function, you can put any code you want to run only once after the play button has been pressed. Once the code has been executed, it'll move on to the loop where the conditions is to keep looping as long as op mode is active, or rather the stop button has not been pressed. In this loop, we update the status to running. Something to note about the linear style is that you have to call an update to telemetry manually every time you want the changes to be visible on the driver station phone. You can do this using the telemetry.update command. To verify your understanding of the concepts of iterative and linear op modes, try and implement the status running feature from the blank linear op mode in the correct function from the blank iterative op mode. If you have implemented it correctly, it should say status running until the op mode has been stopped, but not before it has been initialized. If you want a further challenge, add the amount of time that has passed during the initialization and running phases. Display it with the time passed, followed by a colon, followed by the amount of time. You can get the time the op mode has been running by using the get runtime command. Remember, the time should reset once the play button is pressed. Go ahead and pause the video now to try and implement both the status running feature and the time running feature in the iterative op mode. Hopefully, you learn more about the program flow of an FTC op mode and the different types of op modes. If you are unable to complete the challenge, look in the description to find the source code for both implementations. In our next tutorial, we will begin to look at some more of FTC specific functions that allow you to control your op mode. As always, feel free to leave any questions you have in the comment section and we will see you next time.